friends, it's Amanda May. I'm with Ardith Design and I'm online a few minutes early. We are going to be starting our tutorial at 12 o'clock on the dot. I wanted to make sure that we are live on air and ready to go. I am so excited about this tutorial. So we're gonna start in about four minutes. So I just wanna welcome everyone who is coming on to watch this live tutorial on dyeing Ada cloth fabric. Ada is a preferred, one of the preferred cross stitch fabrics and it's cotton and I'm gonna show you how to dye doing small batch dyeing for beginners at home using supplies that you can get at the grocery store. I know that we are in some unprecedented times uh, across the world and for many of us our craft stores are closed the brick and mortar craft stores and here in Maryland I'm in Maryland in the United States on the East Coast we are allowed to go out to the grocery store to shop and some of our larger grocery stores have all of these items available for you to purchase. So while you're going in to get your essential goods, essential trip, if, you're, if you've even thought about dying for the first time, this is, I don't know, something to wet your palate or something to think about dying. So I am so excited. We're about to get started. I will tell you that I am wearing some clothing that I don't mind if it, it happens to get some dye splatter on it. I have my apron on, but again, whatever clothes you feel comfortable with in case you get dye on, and you are definitely going to need to wear some gloves, which again, you can get at the grocery store. I'm going to just wear these safety gloves. So, okay, I think we need to get started. Are you excited? I'm excited. Oh, and if you have any questions, you can ask them. I've got just cross stitch on uh, that will help answer questions and I will do my very best to answer questions if they arise. And I'm just so excited that you are all here and joining me today. So let's get started. Okay, I died ahead of time to show you some Ada fabric and my little, we're gonna use my little how-to recipe here. I'm. For the purposes of this video, the exact fabric here we're gonna do. I wanted to show you how like this like yellow fabric, the little white, these are called ornament cuts, meaning these are perfect if you're if you're just testing out fabric. Say you go to one of the big box stores that have a grocery department and a craft department, like you could pick up some Ada cloth like this. I cut this, this is a 14 count DMC Ada cloth. I cut it in four and dyed two pieces to show you ahead of time. And then these two pieces, I zigzagged the edges. I do not have a serger at home, uh, the fancy sewing machine. So I zigzagged the edges and that's to help keep the fraying down for when this project happens. I have this kind of yellow fabric that I got at a secondhand store and it's it's not my favorite. So dyeing it, it came out a little different with like a green hue because the base was yellow. So something to keep in mind. Also, at the grocery store, you're going to want to get, if you don't have a dedicated like stainless steel or metal container to dye with because you don't want to mix your kitchen pot and pan, pots and pans with your dye. So you want to have something exclusive. So at the grocery store, you could pick up like a lasagna tin or one of these and use, you could double it, um, double up and say you want to do two batches at once <laughs> and, and use that. So I, in my quest as a artist and designer, I picked up this little chafing dish that I'm going to use for the sake of dying. So what we're going to do, we're going to put our gloves on. Safety first. I want to say I have safety glasses on, but no, I wear glasses, prescription glasses. <laughs> uh, so the first thing that we're going to do after you put your gloves on, 
Oh, hi from the UK. I see Pam is here in Louisiana. Hi, Debbie. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see camera angle. I have a hot kettle and I just turned it on. I pre, I pre boiled, so it should only be a few minutes here. I filled this up with 1.7 liters of hot water. And why you ask that amount? Well, that's just the max amount that my kettle will hold to boil water. You can boil water on the stove, however, <laughs> however you want to do. And then I have a white, or just a clear for the purposes of this video. Uh, one of the things you want to pre-wash or pre-rinse your fabric that you're going to be using. So I have this, the water bath here. What this does is it preps the fabric so that you're going to get the sizing out of it and get it ready to go. Right now, and I think I just threw a piece on the floor somewhere, ah, the power of life, right? All right, so it's got the sizing and stuff in it. What ideally, I'm showing you in this video, I'm just putting it in here. If you're at your kitchen sink, you might want to run it underwater a little bit more to really get that sizing out of your fabric. So I'm putting it in just to get that sizing out. Again, I'm doing the exact color, the same. Oh, I didn't drop it. I set it over here. Okay, so I've got those four and they're getting, again, to get the sizing out. I've got my water, it came to a boil. Now you wanna be careful. I've got some paper towels that I don't mind if they get, you know, dye. Uh, garbage can, throw it, you know, you just, you want to kind of be mindful of your surfaces as well. If you have like beautiful vintage white subway tile, you might not want to be splash and dye everywhere. So just be aware of that. <laughs> All right. I am going to make a small batch dye. I'm a, I'm, I'm an artist. I'm a cross stitch designer. I am not a professional dyer. <laughs> So I'm just sharing with you one of my recipes and I've dyed some fabric and in one of these, this was my ornament that I submitted to Just Cross Stitch Magazine that was one of the 2019 ornament winners and it's on hand dyed 14 count fabric that I dyed myself in this very chafing dish. So what I did and I will have the recipe to show you too if you don't have a pen and paper what I did, I have these two bottles I got in the grocery section at my big, at the, the, the laundry section, excuse me, <laughs> at the big grocery store. The lids are on firmly. I'm just holding the cap for good measure. You're just going to kind of get that ready. For the dye, I add one teaspoon of salt. This acts as a mordant, and a mordant is a fixant. It helps to keep that, the dye attached. You wanna keep it attached to that cotton aid of cloth. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt. And then I have a dedicated, and I got this at a thrift store, <laughs> at a dedicated teaspoon that I don't use with food. I leave it with my dye. So, for this recipe that made those colors I showed you, I have the writ and it's an emerald green. And I'm gonna do two teaspoons right into my chafing dish here. Put the lid on, again, safety first. I also, I have two little rescue pugs they are safely stowed away because I don't want them to accidentally knock over anything and we get dye everywhere. And then I'm gonna do one teaspoon of Rit Aquamarine. Now you can follow and just pick up one color dye and just do one color. They, these dyes are gorgeous. They have all these different kinds. You do not have to follow this recipe. I just thought it would be fun to kind of mix some colors. So. You know, every time I go, sometimes I just pick up, you know, here's tangerine and fuchsia and cherry red. So these are super fun and you can try all different things with them. So again, you can just follow, you can just do a cap full of one of them without mixing colors. So what I'm going to do now is I have my salt, my colors. I boiled my hot water in my kettle 
and I'm gonna just kind of pour this right in real calmly and gently. Now, I don't know if anybody of you remember the A&W root beers or those, the, the sweet shops. I don't know if anybody has those sweet shops around where you get those long Sunday spoons. Well, I love these. Again, keep this just for dying, not for ice cream. <laughs> and so I poured all that hot water. I think you could maybe see the steam rising. I'm going to use a dedicated thing. If you have a stainless steel utensil, you do, you do not need to use plastic. <laughs> uh, I'm just mixing these colors together. Can you see? It's nice. The blue here. I've got the salt. I've got the color. I've got the boiling water. I've mixed it all together. I've taken my fabric here, which I pre rinsed, albeit with not as much water as maybe you would do under your kitchen sink to get the sizing out. And this is where the fun is. Now, I'm going to put these four pieces in like little quadrants and I can leave them in for 10 minutes or 25 minutes or 30 minutes. And depending on how long I leave it in the dye bath, the color will get, you will be lighter or darker. So, and also you can experiment taking the fabric like with your fingers in the center and like doing a, like a little wrap. So when you set it into the dye bath, it'll help create texture and maybe some modeling in your, in your dye and your fabric where it's not all one solid color, if you like that sort of thing. So cr scrunch it up. I'm going to put that first one down. The second one, I'm gonna just squeeze it out and put it in wrinkled. Now with using this chafing dish or say you get one of the, like the lasagna pans at your grocery store, it's a shallow container so that some of the, your fabric might stick up out of the water. That could be good if you want a real modeled look or it could be not so good if you're just looking for a solid color. So if you're looking for a solid color, you might wanna sit here and like, Use your spoon and like mix it around and to, to keep that color universal. Here, I'm gonna just like do a fun little scrunch. There's no rhyme, there's no reason. I'm scrunching it up and I'm just gonna put it right down in there. And this one, what should we do? Should we roll it? Let's see what a roll looks like. I see, hi Faith. How long are those bottles of dye good for once to open? That is an excellent question. I, that is a really excellent question. So I don't see expiration dates. I would, I would refer to the manufacturer's directions. I am not sponsored by RIT. <laughs> I, I'm just using their product. I, that's a really great question. I'm sorry. I don't have the answer to that. I, um, Maybe if you go on to like ritdye.com and see if they have special directions. Okay, how does linen dye? Linen dyes beautifully. It's a natural fiber um, from the flax plant. So these dyes, again, that you can get at the grocery store, they recommend um, using it on um, like linen, cotton, um, some of the wool, silk, and nylon, and the wool and the silk have different mordants, like you don't, the salt versus the cotton, you use the salt, they use a different protocol with this dye, um, and the same, they don't recommend using like polyester. I tried, I got all on my high horse, and I thought, well, I'm going to try to dye some of my polyester ribbon that I have. I put it in a dye bath for 30 minutes not one drop of dye soaked into that polyester ribbon. So this dye is not good for that. You wanna use something else. There's also very high quality dyes. I mean, artisanal dyes, Dharma Trading has beautiful dyes, um, lots. And then there's natural dyes if you wanna go that route, beautiful books and blogs on dyeing with natural, with natural items versus using a bottle of dye. So it, it just depends. Um, I love dyeing linen, but 
I can't get linen at one of my big box stores right now. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> um, do I have, hello from Canada. Hi. All right, so I have this in my dye bath. I've kind of scrunched things up. I can like, you know, waiting around. I can watch it, you know what they say, watching water boil, <laughs> it takes forever. Um, just as a reminder, um, gloves, I'm gonna take my gloves off, but I, you gotta put them back on once. <laughs> uh, I, I did, these two were the identical, this one I left in for experiment purposes. I left this one in for just for 15 minutes and it was lighter. This is the exact fabric, but I left it in for 25 minutes and it was darker. Um, there are some spotting and some inconsistencies in the, in the, I think that's, you know, I, I scrunched it up and also, <laughs> you know, it, the, the sizing, the, the time of day, I, who knows what happened, but it, there is some inconsistency. So this, I like having that one of a kind fabric look because you do this, no one else is going to have what you have. You can play around with recipes. You can, if you wanted to take like a fuchsia and like kind of willy nilly put it on and make a one of a kind with the blotches and the fabric, you play around with it. My, my tip for you is if you, if you've never dyed before and you don't want to spend a lot of money and like use up your precious cross stitch supplies, try with a, a cotton t-shirt or something like same material wise that you don't mind um, playing with color with. And the other fun thing, you've got your dye bath here. After I pull these out and we rinse them, you could always pop in pieces of wood. Um, I have clothes pins right here, popsicle sticks. If you've got kids and you're doing popsicle stick crafts, I know I've built, you know, the little little forts out of popsicle sticks, you throw them in your dye bath and it absorbs that dye. And you've got something fun. Maybe you could do a, a cross stitch finish. Here's my dyes, dark blue and reds and stuff. Super fun. Or if you wanna make something with like a, co with coffee filters, go ahead and throw some coffee filters in here. Make a coffee filter wreath with your colors that you dyed with. So it, you don't have to just do <laughs> your cross stitch fabric if you're if you want to play around with colors and the one thing that the the dye they say is depending on the temperature how much dye you use the temperature of your water it will vary how your color will turn out so if say you're, you are going for consistency you want to say okay I put this in at 613 I'm leaving it in for 20 minutes and so the next time I do a dye, I want to make sure I do it with the boiling water for 20 minutes, same amount. So I like to use a notebook and write down my recipe of what I used. And I find, I'm not sure if this is in reverse, if you guys can read this. Guys, gals, my stitching friends. Um, so I wrote down my recipe so that I'll know exactly what I did this time around. Because one of the things that I've done is I'll be like, Oh my gosh, I love this color. It is amazing. It's the most beautiful color ever. I don't remember what I did to make that color because I didn't write it down. Case in point, I just finished this project. It is by uh, Shakespeare's Peddler and it's called um, With My Needles and I finished this. I dyed this fabric last year. I love this color. I love it. I made some little blotchiness thing, but I, I think this is the cat's pajamas. Can I tell you what, what combination I use? No, because I was a silly pants and I didn't write down my recipe. But if you like, if, if you like not knowing, like, <laughs> like <laughs> if you like just kind of throwing colors together, <laughs> that's totally fine. I'm not saying you have to use your recipe, but if you do want a consistency, especially like, so with these ornament cuts here, that I've used, oh, I almost reached without my glove. These ornaments, so say you're doing like a Satsuma Street 
their ornaments, the 12 days of Christmas, or you're doing prairie schooler and say you, you just dyed the four, but you want to go back later and dye the other eight to do your ornaments. It's good to have that recipe. So here, you know, about five minutes, it's kind of captured. This one, I'm pulling it up real, real, real carefully. You can already tell how I kind of scrunch the fabric. Do you see how it's got kind of a blotted, molted look? Because that dye didn't seep down into the center where I scrunched and twisted that fabric. You know what? I like this so much. I'm just going to pop it right here and I will rinse that later because I like that. That looks pretty to me. <laughs> uh, let's look at the rolled up one here. This is the one we rolled. Ooh, and see this one, it's got fun little, I don't know if you can see the streaks of white here coming down. This, and then I'll leave a couple of these in a little bit longer. So once you've got it down to where you've, you've put it in as long as you wanted it, you're pulling it out. I'm putting these in just for the sake of this demonstration. I just put it right back in that dye, the, the water. If I was doing this in my kitchen, I'd put it right into my sink, turn on that cold water, rinse that dye out until the water runs clear. After that, I'm gonna use my handy dandy clothespins, clothespin it, and I like to hang mine outside to dry. Some artisanal dyers say that the time of day or the season or the temperature outside, if it's raining or cloudy or scorching hot will also impact how your dye looks, like if you're drying it or the humidity in the air. I mean, that's, that's, wow, that's pretty. <laughs> so sometimes it's fun to know, you know, it's a beautiful sunny day and I had my fabric out drying. But your fabric is all dry, okay? You've done all of that. Now this, you're gonna wanna heat set your fabric. Heat setting means I'm gonna take my hot iron, I'm gonna lay it down and I'm gonna, the dried fabric that I've already rinsed in the sink, I am gonna iron that. That hot iron set at the linen cotton, like at the highest heat, that iron is gonna set this color. Rit nor I can guarantee that it's going to be color fast, but you've, of taking every appropriate measure to make it color fast so that if, if it happens to get wet, it doesn't bleed and the colors don't run. Most of us who do cross stitch, we use, if we're using over dyed fabric or threads, floss, if we haven't pre-washed it before we started using it, once we're done doing it, we don't wash it because it could bleed. Unless, again, unless you're using color fast fabric and like a DMC thread that specifically say color fast. <laughs> So those are just some things to keep in mind. I'm, oh my gosh, I'm so excited that you all joined me today. Does, does anybody have any questions? I got, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scoot on a little closer to see. Oh, vinegar. Yes, what does vinegar do instead of salt? So that is, vinegar is also a, a mordant, M-O-R-D-A-N-T. It's a mordant that helps set color. I use salt for this demonstration uh, because I'm using the cotton Ada. Um, other cottons could use vinegar. Uh, it just depends. Great question. I, oh, also I just used this. It's like pink Himalayan sea salt. I know that's like super artisanal. I got this at the dollar store and I keep it just for dying, but you can use, you know, Morton's salt or any salt that you have. Uh, but I do write down what salt I used because this does have minerals in it that could impact the way this dyes. Just, just something to keep in mind. All right. Have you done dyeing with Kool-Aid? No, I have not, but that is so excellent. I know some floss tubers, people, cross stitchers who do videos on YouTube called floss tube have done Kool-Aid dyeing and dyeing their threads with Kool-Aid and it looks awesome. I think it's something I want to look into with my kids. I think they would love it. Uh, thank you for asking. No, I haven't done it, but now I got it, right? <laughs> All right. Do we have any more questions? 
Oh, um, Michelle is asking if I get the wood wet, will they bleed when dyeing the wood? I have not put my wood to the test to see. I, I've dyed it and then I've rinsed it in the sink, but I haven't, that's a really great question. I have not put the wood in a position where it would get wet to bleed. Um, just doing like crafts with kids. Do you use a dry iron or steam? For Ada, I use a dry iron. If I really can't get the 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 wrinkles out and I'm ready to I'm ready to get started with my stitching, I might use the best press. The it's a like it's not a starch best press um, and spray it and then to really to get it nice and crisp. I definitely use best press on Ada when I'm all done stitching and I'm I if I need to get those wrinkles out because fabric retains memory. Um, cotton linen has a memory to it so that's why they you know recommend if you have something in an embroidery hoop or in a q snap that you want to pop them out so that your fabric has a chance to not remember that hoop placement um so if you've got those difficult things i use the best press how much salt did i use for this little this demonstration i used one teaspoon of salt the directions here say like you use a cup of salt for every uh, like two, one or two gallon, three gallons of water. So I mean, I for just doing the small batch, I used a teaspoon. If you're doing a big, I mean, if you're going whole hog, you're dying three yards of fabric, you're doing all and you're using a whole bottle, you're going to want to definitely use more salt. <laughs> but for here, I just used one teaspoon. And, oh, these are all so great questions. Debbie, ice dyeing, oh my gosh. On Instagram, social media, seeing people uh, in Canada and Wisconsin doing the ice dyeing, it's the fresh powder snow and going out, it looks amazing. We only got one snow this season in Maryland. I got the kids out, we built some snowmen, and by the time I thought about snow dyeing, <laughs> The snow had melted and we haven't had it since. I know people use uh, crushed ice, um, it, the blender or your ice from your ice machine. If you have a refrigerator, you can do an ice dye bath. And the, the idea with that is as it melts, your colors and the layers, it, 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 it creates a really beautiful palette on, or beautiful composition on your fabric. Oh, yes, I want to ice dye. Oh, all the things, make all the things. All right, do we have any more questions or comments? Any ideas on what I should do with this fabric? <laughs> Let's see, okay, so I had this one, I had sticking up out of the dye, so there's still some white. And you know, some of the things too, you can always, say you don't like the way your, your stuff looks at the end of the day, you could coffee tea stain it, you know, coffee tea dye. Um, there's some amazing resources for that. Or you could even dye, put this in a second dye bath with a different color and try to over dye it again. Um, the only rules I have for dyeing is just make sure you're wearing clothes that you don't mind. If, if they get stained, wear your gloves, realize that you're working with hot, hot water and have fun. So what, four rules? <laughs> Oh, Holly, thank you so much. I'm so happy that you enjoyed the video. I I hope you all know that I appreciate you. I appreciate you spending time with me on this midweek time. I mean, thank you. You all enhance my life more than I can say and cross stitch has changed my life. I feel like I learn new things every single day and just know that I appreciate you. Um, Annie's Publishing appreciates you <laughs> and Hopefully I'll be back soon with another tutorial. Uh, I'm, I'm taking my gloves off. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you all so much and have a beautiful week.